Let's get the very latest polls and battleground landscape from NBC's political director, Chuck Todd, who's our kind of walking, talking GPS system. Chuck, what's the latest this morning, just 48 hours ago? Well, good morning, Tom. Well, there's four states that both campaigns look at their tracking polls first. It starts with Virginia, where we have Obama with a narrow lead, 47 to McCain's 44. In Mason-Dixon polling, this is the first time Obama's been ahead in Virginia. In Florida, we have Obama, 47, McCain, 45. This has been a consistent lead in the Mason-Dixon poll for Obama. Small, but still a lead. In Colorado, the largest lead that Obama has of any of the states we have today, Obama, 49, McCain, 44. And, and in Ohio, a bright spot for McCain. McCain at 47, Obama at 45. This is one of those states, of course, a Republican has never won without Ohio. And then our other troika of states here, Nevada, Obama at 47, McCain 43. This race is tightened in that state. Both candidates in Nevada this final weekend. In Missouri, McCain, basically a dead heat, 47, Obama 46. And finally, in North Carolina, where we've seen lots of talk about early voting, we have McCain at 49, Obama at 46. All of these polls, of course, Tom, could change depending on what is the percentage of turnout among young voters, among African Americans, among older voters, etc. All right, Chuck, stand back for a moment, and let's take a look at the big map and see what's going on there for us as well. Well, we'll show you what we had last week. Here is last week's map. I want you to take a look, keep an eye on these states up here in the Rocky, northern Rocky Mountain region, as well as here the agricultural Midwest and down here in the south where you can see our changes this morning. And you will see what's happened. These states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan solidifying for Obama. John McCain's not even there. Two new toss-ups, Montana and North Dakota, and if we really wanted to get precise, we'd also put the Omaha Congressional District in Nebraska, Nebraska, a state that splits its electoral votes uh, by Congressional District, and in that Omaha District, it is a dead heat, Tom. And Chuck, what about voter turnout, and especially the organization of the two campaigns, getting their people to the polls? Well, it, we're seeing a lot of the early voting, a lot of the long lines. It's made folks question whether Georgia, South Carolina could end up being much closer than people thought because of this surge among voters, particularly African Americans. And of course, we've watched everything that's been happening in Florida and North Carolina this weekend, Tom. And why would John McCain be spending so much time in Pennsylvania and New Hampshire in the final weekend, Chuck? Well, it's a simple math problem that he's got. Here's our, our columns here. I'm going to put all of the current toss-up states in McCain's column and watch his number uh, as it grows right up here. If you move all of these states over, Indiana, North Dakota, Missouri, Montana, North Carolina, Ohio, Florida, and Nevada, you see the problem he's got. He's still at 252, 18 short. So what does that mean? If he pulls a Pennsylvania over, well, we see Obama goes down to 265, McCain gets his 273. Then you asked why New Hampshire? That's the insurance policy. Nevada, a state that is uh, uh, that Obama right now has that narrow lead in, if that went to him, then McCain would need New Hampshire to get back over his 270. So it is the only number path he's got left. They know this, and that's why they had to figure out how to put Pennsylvania back in play. We don't know if it really is. We know he's spending a lot of time there, and they had to figure out if New Hampshire, a state that's been incredibly kind to McCain's political career in the past, to see if it can resurrect him one more time.